welcome to Saudi Arabia and to the new season of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. And of course, welcome to this first ever Nissan Formula E pre-race show. I'm Darren Adetosie and we'll be providing you with exclusive access to the Nissan Formula E team. We'll be seeing the cars, the drivers, and we'll be taking you for behind the scenes into the garage. The eighth season of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship, the all-electric racing series. And this year, we'll be traveling to 16 races across the world, 10 countries in total, three of which are new. We've got a new qualifying format and Nissan Edams actually have a new driver, Maximilian Gunter, who we'll be catching up with later on in the episode along with his teammate, Sebastian Buemi. And then we'll be hearing from Tommaso Volpe, who is the Nissan Global Motorsports Director. So it's gonna be an amazing show. Strap yourselves in, it's gonna be an electrifying season. Formula E is a highly competitive, fully electric racing series. 22 world-class drivers and 11 teams, including some of the world's biggest manufacturers, are battling it out wheel-to-wheel -wheel on the streets of iconic cities. Racing at speeds up to 280 kilometers per hour and accelerating from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in just 2.8 seconds with a maximum power output of 250 kilowatts. The 45 minutes plus one lap race produces high intensity racing with teams and drivers battling on a level playing field thanks to identical batteries, tires and aerodynamics. Unique features like attack mode and fan boost make Formula E anything but a traditional motorsport. And for the 2022 season, the cars have an extra 20 kilowatts lots of power to play with, meaning faster and more furious battling. But still with the crucial need for teams and drivers to manage energy efficiently and strategically to win the race and secure victory. This is the pinnacle of electric racing. This is Formula E. So as I mentioned earlier, we have a lot of exciting new changes happening this season. And who better to talk us through it than the head of Nissan Formula E project, Tommaso Volpe. Tommaso, great to see you. Great How are you see. feeling ahead of season eight? Recharged, refreshed? Absolutely refreshed and very excited to start again. And uh, of course, we, we kept on working during the, the break, but yeah. uh, it's great to be back on track and to start the first the first uh, the first race very soon yeah well especially this season as there are so many new changes we've got the new qualifying format the cars have an increase in power and you also of course have a new driver max Ginter. Uh, absolutely it's going to be great this year we have more power which is always exciting in motorsport the, the drivers are very excited to have more power on track of course the, the performance of cars in this sport is, is pretty much about managing the energies in an energy race really but uh, having more power is always a good news and you have more fun on track and uh, you can play more uh, with the power and, uh, and the drivers are very excited about this. For qualifying uh, format obviously is, is more complex but it will deliver even more excitement and entertaining to, to, to the fun. It will help to have more consistency in the performance of uh, of the drivers over the season, but also to, to have more focus on the, the heroes by the fan. The moment you have the duels, you have really like this battle, which is quite unique in motorsport. So I think it's going to be great. It will be amazing. And of course, we have a new driver, Max, and we are very excited to have him. I mean, we feel he has been with the team for a long time, actually, because uh, he's already very well integrated and uh, uh, engineers are happy, mechanics are happy. We are all happy and we are sure that together with Seb, he will deliver a great job this season. Amazing news. Well, Tommaso, before we leave you, we have some fan questions that have been submitted. Thank you to everyone that sent them in. And for the next episode, you can do that on nismo.com or in the comments below on this video. So starting off with a question from Instagram, uh, Francesco Coluccio has asked, what did you keep and what did you improve from the last season car? Good question. Well, uh, well, the car is the same because the homologation is the same, so the hardware actually is the same, but uh, uh, we changed a lot on all the control systems, so mainly the energy management software, which is uh, in a way the soul of the car. So on this, we, 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 we think we are progressing and uh, we, we should deliver a better job this season, this coming season. Amazing. And we have a next question coming in from Instagram. Um, and Stephen has asked, using the same chassis across teams ensures competitiveness. Would you like to see those rules opened up so you can design your own aero parts? Actually, we, we think that the attractiveness of Formula E is exactly the fact that OEMs or car brands can focus on the development of what is more relevant for us, which is the powertrain, the electric powertrain, and all the control systems and the energy management which uh, come with it. So we, we really enjoy the fact that we can uh, spend our money in R&D for this part of the, of the car, which generates knowledge that we can actually transfer to our core business. So we are very happy with the regulations as they are. 
Very exciting. Well, thank you very much, Tommaso. We'll be hearing from him later on in the season. But for now, I think I've spotted Max back there. So I'm going to go over there. Thanks very much. And let's go and see Max. So let's go and have a chat. Max, great to see you. Well, welcome to the Nissan Formula E pre race show. Thank you very much. And welcome to Nissan as a whole as a driver this season. Um, how excited are you to be part of the team? Yeah, really excited. I mean, uh, I feel like we spend our first uh, weeks and months together as a team in a very good way. You know, um, they are not really testing opportunities apart from obviously the official test in Valencia. So, yeah, we really try to use this time in the factory to yeah, have a lot of conversation, a lot of meetings to really speak the same language and uh, yeah, push in the same direction right from the beginning and um, yeah, really feeling at home and uh, okay. having a good feeling with my, with my new team. So they're looking after you well? Absolutely, <laughs> I can't complain. Good, yeah. well talking back about Valencia, it's obviously pre-season testing, that was your first time in the car, how did that feel, how did pre-season go? Yeah, I think uh, it was a very good test for us, you know, in these three days we really tried to put everything uh, into it, you know, a lot of um, software uh, setup items that we wanted to try on the team side, but as well on my side, you know, first time in the car to get a feeling for all the new systems, for the new setup, because, you know, every team has got its own f philosophy of how to achieve the performance, so yeah. the whole powertrain in the back, the rear geometry, everything is different, so yeah, that was very interesting for me and it was really curious to explore all this in Valencia and um, yeah I'm really happy before the three days went. Absolutely and so what have you been up to since Valencia? Well let's say apart from my usual preparation I uh, just spent a beautiful Christmas time together with my with my family um, in south of Germany. Amazing. Um, so that was good there was quite some snow um, uh, enjoyed some cross-country skiing and um, yeah just a uh, very Ooh, nice and silent. Very time. fun. Well, we actually have some fan questions in. Um, and Susie from Nismo.com has submitted, how do you prepare mentally and physically for the race? Well, basically, you know, the preparation that I'm doing on the, on the physical side is uh, with, with my coach, uh, like fitness coach, sports scientist. I'm working with him for 10 years now. So um, really long, long relationship. And um, yeah, he he's training with me um, as well. He's sending me the training plan if I'm in Monaco um, so I can do all the workouts by my own and um, yeah that's kind of the physical part and then on the mental part as well you really try to always uh, yeah push yourself to a new limit uh, yeah. because that's really what is important for us with all these things surrounding us with all uh, all what's going on in, in Formula E to really just always yeah focus yeah. on yourself and do your own thing. I bet a lot of resilience as well. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, it's my, my philosophy or my mindset in general is to always become a better version of myself and I really enjoy this uh, on and off the track. I love that. Um, Kazoo23 underscore 35 has sent in her question from Instagram um, and they ask, how long do you spend in the simulator in preparation for a race weekend? So usually in a simulator, like uh, Sepp and me, we share like uh, three days. Um, so like one and a half days each for, for the race. And you really try to cover um, everything you can uh, in terms of uh, push laps. So we've got the 250 mode, the 220 mode, all the different warm up procedures and so on. And then um, the same for, for the race. You know, there are so many different scenarios that you need to, to cover um, yeah. and that you try to get prepared for. Um, obviously it's a very good tool, the simulator, because we don't have any, any testing apart from that. So yeah, it's really, really useful and uh, um, enjoyed a lot. Um, well, thanks very much, Max. Um, we look forward to seeing you on the track later on this weekend um, and we'll be chatting with him later on in the show as well. Well, I wasn't joking earlier when I said that we'd be giving you exclusive access to the Nissan Edams team. Right now, we're bang in the middle of the garage. I'm joined by Lawrence, who's going to be giving us an exclusive tour. So, Lawrence, please take it away. Well, welcome, Darren. Welcome Thank to the you. garage. So, as you can see, we've got two cars here. We've got Maxim Gunther's car here and Sebastian Buemi's car here. Amazing. All the mechanics are getting those cars ready because they've not actually seen these cars for two months. They've been in transit and coming over here. So they're beavering away, getting the batteries charged up, getting the powertrains put on and the bodywork all ready for the race weekend. There's actually about 10 mechanics that work on each car, 10 mechanics and engineers that work Ooh. on each car, 20 in total. The software engineers all work behind there and that's where the real sort of secret stuff happens uh, tip tapping away on their laptop so we can't go into there i'm afraid not okay no. that's fine though because you yeah. still give us a nice tour of what's we going will, on here we all will. right all yeah. right okay and then in the corner we have uh, the driver's area where all their changing area and the kit and the helmets and everything is all stored 
At the back we have a parts department, so we have spare parts for everything that's needed on the car, including a whole spare chassis, should one be damaged badly enough, hopefully not. Uh, and <laughs> Fingers then, crossed. Exactly. And then right at the back we've got a car, or outside we've got a carbon fibre repair shop. So everything Ooh. we need to keep these cars running, a mobile workshop that travels around all of the races. Well, I'm very intrigued to see it. I know that we can't go in there. What can you show us? Yeah, let's have a look at Max's yeah, car over here. Yeah, let's do it. So this is Max Gunther's race car. This is the car number 22. Okay, why, why Yeah, well, I'll tell you. Uh, Seb's car is number 23, which all Nissan factory cars run at the number 23, okay. traditionally. Ah. And the reason for that is, uh, in Japanese, the uh, number two is pronounced ni, and the number three Ooh. is pronounced san. So okay, 23, 23, ni san. So this is ni ni. Okay. So yeah, the number 22 car, um, what can we tell you about these cars? Well, as you know, the Formula E cars are pretty much the same from the outside. And that's because it's what's called a spec championship, which means a lot of the parts are deliberately the same. So okay. the chassis is all the same. So this big tub running down the center, that is all the same. The front suspension, the bodywork that we can see over here, that is all the same. And the reason for that is so that we uh, concentrate our efforts on developing the electric powertrain, which is all okay. situated towards the back of the car. Okay. Should we start with the front and then work Let's our way down? Let's start with the front. So um, we've got the brakes here. So these are carbon fiber uh, brake discs. Not that big, as you can see. Yeah, they're quite small, actually. Why is that? It's small but powerful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, carbon fiber brakes are very powerful anyway, but a lot of the braking on an electric car is actually done with what's called the regenerative braking. So that is the motor at the back generating electricity and so slowing the car down at the same time. So they don't actually need as big a brakes as a traditional petrol engine car would need. Okay. So moving backwards, we can see all this lovely carbon fiber that's protecting the drivers and where the bodywork mounts onto. So these are like side impact structures here made of carbon fiber. Um, and then we've got the halo here, which all um, FIA single-seater cars now have to protect yeah. the driver. So a fantastic bit of safety. But what's unique to Formula E is that if you have a look around the top, there's some lights within the halo. Ooh, so we'll be seeing those light up in Deria, won't we? Exactly. Well, yeah, with a night race, you see it really clearly. But those, uh, those light up to tell you when the driver is engaging either fan boost mode or attack mode. So they light up different colors to tell you those two different things. Awesome. Uh, in the cockpit, we've got the, the steering wheel, uh, a very complex bit of kit there, which uh, we won't go fully into right now, but there's about 40 different switches and about 100 different modes that oh they can go goodness. into. It's incredible that they can drive <laughs> so fast around the track and twizzle these knobs all at the same time. So incredible. Wow. Above us here, we have the, uh, the gantry. This is bespoke made by, by the team to, um, to service the car. And uh, this does all sorts of different things. So in Formula E, there's no telemetry. So that means there's no live data coming back uh, to the car, which is a, a cost reducing um, uh, reason. Uh, but when it comes back, the car plugs in like an umbilical cord into this gantry here. And all the data is sort of taken out of the car and over to the, the boffins on the laptops over there. Wow. So they can see what's going on and how they can improve it. These uh, cables running down here into the car are actually cooling cables. So when the, when the battery is being charged, and the battery is just sort of in there as well, yeah. um, they charge it so fast uh, that um, to, to reduce the heat and to make it charge quicker, they have the, the cooling there. Very cool. So the charging cable also comes into here, into the, the battery. And then as we move back from here, this is where Nissan really does its thing. Is this so the powertrain? This is the powertrain. Okay, so this is hidden where, behind. Yeah, this is like... where Nissan can really make the difference. So in this part of the car is essentially all Nissan. So um, from where the battery goes, there's an inverter, which turns the power from the battery into a type of power that the motor can use. Okay. The motor is developed by Nissan, and then that goes into the transmission, which drives these axles here and ultimately drives the rear wheels uh, and, and powers the car. Now, all of those things are, are developed by Nissan, and we've got one uh, running at the moment. Oh yeah, well. Right on <laughs> <laughs> exactly, so we'll leave them to get to work. Yeah. Um, it's been great chatting with you, Lawrence. I've definitely learned a lot more. I've always been curious about what all these things mean. Yeah, this is what they look like. Yeah, many. this yeah. is it. Well, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thanks. 
Now, the talking point of this season has to be qualifying. This year, we have a brand new format, which will see the two fastest drivers battle it out head to head in a one lap shootout to determine who will be on pole position. Whereas the drivers at the top of the championship from last season would go out, which wasn't so good because the track conditions weren't the best. So we're really excited about this new format. And I'm joined here today by Pablo Martino, who is going to be talking us through why they decided to change it. Pablo's head of the sporting matters for Formula E at the FIA. So Pablo, thank you for joining us. Let's talk about the new qualifying format. Well, we decided to make something new, something that can create some kind of excitement, but at the same time that could be more beneficial for those who really deserve to be in pole position. So basically we have divided the qualifying session in two parts. The first part is for the 22 cars. We split them in 11 and 11 according to the championship standings. So everybody is like in a fair group. They have to be the four fastest of their own group. And these four fastest will progress to the duels part. That is a, also known as a head-to-head -head, uh, battles. These battles happen in a quarter-final, semi-final and final format. So it's easy for everybody, especially for the people at home, to follow how it is going. And basically, it's a one-lap shootout. The winner of that, lap, of that lap shootout amongst the two drivers is progressing to the next stage. So it's easy for understand. And it's get to the point that we get to the final that it will be, or we expect it will be exciting. Very exciting indeed. I imagine in the process of figuring out what the new format would be, there were lots of different ideas floating around. How did you know that this would be the one? And what are your expectations of it? Well, the first expectation is that we make that this is something fair, so everybody can get the same opportunities to get to the pole position. That yeah. is what all they expect. Not only for the points that they are granted by the pole position, but as well because it's kind of a privileged position at the start of the race. You are first, so you are starting with more chances to win. And that's quite important. And people uh, in the paddock and the teams, the drivers, they focus really a lot of efforts on, on, on achieving that, that position in the grid. Uh, we wanted, as I said, to make it something fair, equitable, and that everybody can uh, get the, the same access or the same opportunity to get the access to, to that. And uh, yeah, basically we had uh, kind of brainstorming some crazy ideas as we always have, uh, but we really think that we had uh, delivered a product and a, a session that it's good for both parties, for the drivers from the seat, for the teams, but also for the TV and the spectator. Well, fingers crossed when all the action kicks off over the weekend, we'll be seeing Nissan at the top of the grid. But Pablo, it's been great chatting with you and getting to hear more about how the qualifying format's going to work. Uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing the cars on the track. Yeah, looking forward Thank to it. Thank you very much, Pablo. Cheers. So I've managed to track down Sebastian Buemi. Seb, great to see you again. How was your off season? It was actually great. Happy to see you too. Um, we've had a, a pretty long period of time since Berlin and obviously we had the Valencia test in December. So uh, we've been working as hard as we could in, in trying to uh, prepare the car and improve it as much as possible. Obviously, um, season seven was a disappointing one for, for us as a team. So we want to bounce back and yeah, I hope we're going to have a good start to season eight. Well, yeah, season eight is an exciting one, isn't it? We've got the new qualifying format. Your car has some extra power. Let's start off with the qualifying format. What are your thoughts on that? Excited? Yeah, very excited. I, I think we've never seen that in motorsport with uh, the duels and, and the group at the beginning of qualifying. So I think it's going to make it a little bit more fair for, for everyone, especially on a track like here in Riyadh, where the track improvement is, is pretty much massive. So we knew that being in Group 1, you basically had no chance to have a good qualifying position. That's going to completely change this year with the group. Uh, so we, we're going to do the best we can with it. I mean, it's for everyone the same. So the idea is to just, you know, uh, position ourselves well for, for the race. And with the extra power as well on this stereo circuit, how advantageous do you think it will be? Well, I, I think, again, qualifying will be with the same power, but the race, um, the race will be with a bit more power. So we will be running 220 kilowatts instead of 200. And the attack mode will be with the full power of 250 of qualifying. So it's just going to be a bit faster. I don't expect big, big differences. Maybe the attack mode will be slightly less powerful than before because the gap of power is a bit less. Mm. But other than that, you know, it's just up to us to manage the battery well, the tires, because obviously more power means more energy in the battery, more energy in the tires. So it's just up to us as a team to, to do a good job. And how are you settling with, with Max as your teammate? 
I'm happy to have Max as my teammate. Obviously, he's coming from a good team. He had uh, a few wins there, so you know uh, he brought us quite a few uh, new things that hopefully will make us a bit faster this season. Amazing. Well, we're looking forward to that. And we actually have some fan questions in for you. Okay. Uh, so from Nismo.com, Billy has asked, with no pit stops, how does strategy affect the race? I think it's a bit different. Obviously, um, we don't have any pit stop now since uh, season four. So the last four seasons now uh, have been without pit stop. And clearly, we don't have pit stop, but we have the attack mode. Uh, we have the fan boost. And we have this whole story about the energy management and the fact that we need to do a 45 minute race plus one lap. So clearly, um, I would say I'm not lacking the fact of not having a pit stop. It's just that uh, we just have to deal with uh, the energy management, which is already uh, a lot to deal with. A eh? lot to do, yeah. Plus the attack mode, when you take it, how many attack modes you have. So no, I don't, I don't think the fact of not having any uh, pit stop is, is an issue. It's just a bit of a different racing and it's up to uh, us teams to, to do a good job with it. Brilliant answer. Uh, the next question comes from Instagram and I'll be honest, I'm going to butcher this name. N-V-H-H-R-S-Y. Sorry if I got that wrong. Um, but they ask, what do you get? How do you get ready before getting into the car? And do you have any rituals? Uh, not so many rituals, but maybe I just jump in the car and out from the, the right side. Yeah. The left side, sorry, excuse okay. me. <laughs> so um, other than that, not much. You know, I try to to be at the back of the garage and I try to, to focus on my stuff, on what I have to do. Um, I like to spend a bit of time with my engineer and then on my own just to review things because, you know, this year we're going to have FP1 that will be down to only 30 minutes and then you have F FP2 with 30 minutes and then that's qualifying. So yeah. you really don't have much time and you have to be really focused on, on the job to do. Definitely. And uh, Lawrence has asked, does it make much difference racing at night? Do you have to change anything? Racing at night is actually nice. It's yeah. the only race we have at night, but it's, it's amazing. So other than the visor, I'm, I'm going to drive with the, the clear visor just because I, I want to see slightly better. But um, the lights are so good that it doesn't really matter you don't really see the difference because you see the track so well mm. but yeah just changing my my weather visor sorry. but yeah it's one of my favorites as well the night race so cool to watch but thank you so much Seb I'll thank let you, you to continue with your preparations thanks, thanks everyone well, that's all we have time for today, but hopefully after hearing about all of the exciting changes for Season 8, you're as excited as I am for the cars to hit the track this weekend. Speaking of, on screen now is the details for where you can watch wherever you are in the world so you don't miss out on the action. But the racing kicks off on Friday and Saturday. Qualifying is at 3.30 local time and the racing is at 8pm, so you don't want to miss it. Um, but I look forward to seeing you in Mexico for the next Build Up show. Until then, make sure that you submit your fan questions so that maybe Maybe you'll be featured in the next one. Uh, you can do that in the comments below or on nismo.com. But for now, we've just got the racing to focus on here in Diria. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy.